Update, I never want to be intimate again, like ever. But I do not want to lose or hurt my husband. I've been struggling with this for over a year. Original post, I, 29 female, am married to a man who we shall call John, 30. I saw other posts on here of others in a similar spot, and I have done a few things over the last year or so. I have been to doctors, therapists, asked around online about solutions, but my libido is just flat dead. Nothing brings it back, nobody has had answers, yet. I am in perfect shape, so is he, and I haven't lost love or physical attraction, no body dysmorphia, hormonal levels are fine, I am not on hormonal birth control, I don't take any other medications. I tried stupid online BS and snake oil, but I think deep down I knew that stuff was never going to work. We have been together for 7 years, married for 3. We are happy, we have a home and good careers, 3 wonderful dogs, and our families get along. But I just cannot stomach the idea of ever doing it again. It makes my skin crawl thinking about it. I have either been making excuses to put it off, or just grinning and bearing it when he was clearly just riled up, and I didn't have the heart to look him in the eye, and say, you. I literally have a cry the next time I'm alone. I was his first but he wasn't my first, and I taught him how to be my lover. Everything was fine for over 5 years, John is considerate, takes his time, made sure we both had fun and felt satisfied. I feel so awful even considering talking to him about it. Before last year, we had done it nearly every day, but over the last year, my drive has slowly died. I think that I just do not want to do it, ever again. Is that so odd? Why is that so wrong? How do I approach this with John? I plan to sit him down on our next day off together, which is in five days. I have that long to decide what to do. I can't do this to him or myself any longer than that. Is it right for me to unilaterally cut that part of our relationship out? I do not think so, but everyone says that, I shouldn't be forced to do it just to keep my marriage. Which sounds idiotic, based on the other posts here. I know intimacy is important. I don't know what to do next. He has been completely in the dark on this because I'm scared of divorce. I don't want him to think I don't love him, or think he's unattractive. I'm scared to hurt my best friend. I don't want him to resent me or to feel trapped. Just, any advice please. I feel like I am about to burn our entire lives down. Now for the top advice before reading the update. You must communicate this to him. He needs to be able to choose between you and a dead bedroom, or moving on. You are certainly within your rights to not want to do it again, but you don't have the right to choose that for John. It makes my skin crawl thinking about it. I have either been making excuses to put it off, or just grinning and bearing it, when he was clearly just riled up, and I didn't have the heart to look him in the eye and say you. I literally have a cry the next time I am alone. If it's this extremely bad, John needs to know. He needs to figure out how to handle it. There's a third option, that's for him to have a hall pass for physical relations only. But that's very tricky. Personally, I believe that hall passes are a trap that lead to jealousy and a bunch of other small relationship problems that build up and become a lot. If you can do it, it's a great compromise, but it's only a great compromise if you're personally okay with your husband sleeping with others. If this even slightly vexes you, imagine how it'll feel after a tough day at work, traffic on the way home, and the Starbucks messed up your order, and you pull home to find your car has a flat, and then your husband tells you he has a friend coming over later, or whatnot. You've talked to a lot of people and sought a lot of help, but you haven't spoken to him about it, and you need to. It's good that you've planned a time to do it. You're doing it with him when you don't want to, out of obligation, that's traumatizing and unhealthy. It definitely won't help you get your drive back, all it's doing is reaffirming the repulsion that you're experiencing at the moment. It's not wrong that you don't want to do it, but you recognize that you're currently incompatible physically. Explain how you're feeling, tell him you love him, and find him attractive and that you have fears that your honesty will end in divorce. Put it all on the table and then figure it out together. I know I should have talked to him sooner. Fear has made me not for so long, but I know I have to put things on the table. I had not thought about the trauma aspect. I might need to mention that too. I would not mention to him that intimacy with him is traumatizing. That's so unfair when you have not communicated this to him before. This news is going to be blindsiding enough without you basically telling him he's been victimizing you. I just don't see how that would be helpful. Your line in the sand is no more intimacy, so rather than expanding on the ways in which you think doing it is terrible, perhaps focus on what compromises you're prepared to make to maintain the marriage. Are you willing to make this an open or polyamorous relationship? Do y'all want kids? If so, how would they be made? You shouldn't have intimacy you don't want to have, but this is a deal-breaker situation for most people, and I would honestly be surprised if that wasn't the case here. But if you really want to make the marriage work, then you should be prepared to explain what you envision the relationship looking like going forward. 
No one should be forced to do anything, but it's important for you to acknowledge that you're the one changing the very foundation of your relationship as romantic and intimate partners, and it's not reasonable to expect that he will forego that forever. And now for the update. I decided to talk to him sooner rather than later and took a few days off from work to sort this out. I think he might have left me over the line to him for a year part. I am mostly just venting, but if you have thoughts, by all means. I do not think there is anything I can do alone to fix this. John was not angry at first, but made it clear that he would not support being in a dead bedroom marriage. He was also a bit annoyed that I asked if he would be okay sleeping with others. He is one of those super honest and holds to his values quite strongly, which is one of the many things I respect about him. There was a lot of emotions, he walked around the neighborhood a few times, would come back in and ask questions, then leave again. He goes on walks to clear his head, so this is not strange. He was angry after I told him how long I had kept this to myself, and to be clear, he asked for a timeline. I told him about the doctors, snake oil, and the therapy. I knew he was going to be mad, but John was red and absolutely freaking silent. I've only seen him genuinely mad once before, and it quite literally paralyzed me to have him look at me that way. John has never and will never hurt me, but he never made me feel small or vulnerable. His size always made me feel safe, but in that moment, I felt different. He just walked away, got his laptop bag and said he was going to a friend's house. I have a feeling I know which one, but I did not have a chance to ask. I have not heard back from him since he left two days ago. I called and texted, but he didn't answer me directly. Instead, I got a call from his older sister. She asked me to just leave him be and let him work stuff out for the moment. At least I know he's somewhere safe. Then she asked me what I did to upset him so much, and I foolishly told her the truth. That went just swell. I completely needed my butt chewed, because that can only help right. Sarcasm, in case that's not obvious. At this point, I just want him to come home. He has been the perfect partner, and I just want him to talk to me. He doesn't deserve this, I should have never kept anything to myself. We have a king-sized bed that I am sleeping in alone. The dogs are clearly confused, sleeping by the door, because I am the only one feeding and walking them instead of both of us. My plan, assuming he goes along with it, is suggesting couples therapy. That's all I got. Let him process this. It's a lot. It really is. If my wife came to me and told me she'd been bearing it and that doing it with me made her skin crawl for a year as she said in the previous post, I would feel freaking insane. Like, he's going to feel like a goddamn predator. I would feel like I had been unknowingly victimizing my wife for a year. I'd be furious too. Like, she's put him in the worst possible position here by just refusing to be honest with him. This is the reason. My husband recently overheard me telling someone that way back when I had postpartum depression, I had to stop Prozac after a few months because it killed my libido and made my skin crawl. Now, my husband and I have always had an awesome fun life that I greatly enjoy. He was still devastated, truly distraught, at the thought that I was grinning and bearing it for a few months 15 years ago. I assured him that I liked the closeness and it felt good once I warmed up, which was true by the way. If you're going to tell your husband you don't want to do it anymore, that's one thing. But you can't tell a man who cares about you that all those activities you've had for a year has been unwanted and skin-crawlingly awful. That's cruel and completely breaks any trust. He's going to think, what else have you been faking and lying about? Can attest to this. I was personally told recently that my significant other dealt with it and just used it to get that physical satisfaction and that it had been going on like that for a while. I'm still pretty real back about it and can't help but feel like I was being used. Based on what you say are his strong values about monogamy, you've given him a deal breaker. You've also told him that you've felt this way for a year, which means every time y'all were intimate, he was under the impression that you were an enthusiastically willing participant. He needs time to process and really, you should assume there's no coming back from this. And by bringing up an open relationship, her husband probably thinks that she doesn't want him anymore, but has someone else in mind. He was also a bit annoyed that I asked if he would be okay sleeping with others. It was definitely when she mentioned this. If I was in the husband's shoes, that would be ringing alarm bells in my head. I'm sure OP has no intent of malice, but it definitely doesn't come across in a positive light. She's dug herself a hole so deep that there's no way to recover this relationship. Don't bother wasting money on marriage counseling. Do the right thing and initiate a divorce and don't take any of his assets. He gets to keep the house. I will see what he says. If he's willing to help search for a solution, then I will too. We have a prenup. Now for the last story. I, 50 female, found out my cheating husband, 50 male, has been working for 1% of his usual salary for two years without telling me. I caught my husband in an affair a year ago, 
We have three kids together, age 24, 19, and 17. I thought that I needed to give the man I've been building a life with since we were 24 another chance. The affair was with a woman, 23 female, he met while on an extended business project in Boston, we live in Texas. I thought that it was a midlife crisis he would step out of, and he seemed very remorseful. He said there was just lust between them, and offered up financial documents showing that he paid for her rent, and paid off her credit cards, but claimed that was it. He agreed to end this relationship immediately and said he wanted to commit to family again. The only blame he tried to put on me was that he did feel slightly disappointed that I did not even consider his suggestion to look into implants, and said that my fears for getting implant illness are overblown. My husband works as an accountant and has climbed his way up to an executive position. At the firm I thought he was still working at, he was an equity partner and all the colleagues on his level, and the board of directors are all extremely close to him. One of his cousins is on the board of directors, and his half-brother is one of the firm's most lucrative clients. Another person on the board of directors literally owes his life to my husband, because they were friends in their 20s, and one morning, when my husband decided to check up on him, he found him overdosing and choking on his own vomit. My husband cleared his airways and gave him the right medical attention until help came. This man has said that he is my husband's servant until the day he dies. Besides that, my husband has also been asked to be the godfather for many of his other colleagues' children. The industry is definitely still an old boys club, and besides my husband's connections, he also brings a joint law and business degree to the table. So it goes without saying that I was more than shocked to find out through his friend's ex-wife that my husband has not officially worked at his company for over two years, and while he still spends all his time with them, the company effectively divorced him on paper. At his level, a firing would be nearly impossible and come only after a lot of bad blood and conflicts, but apparently he has been fired this entire time and his equity dividends also mysteriously disappeared. This was all happening while my husband and I continued to go to these people's homes and celebrate birthdays and anniversaries with them, with everybody acting like nothing has happened. I asked my friend how she knows and she says she was sorry that she was telling me this but she was sick of her ex-husband's financial deceits during divorce and that she didn't want this to happen to anybody else. She said her ex confessed when he was drunk that my husband was making $25,000 a year as a so-called receptionist or assistant at a small company owned by a friend of a friend but basically just gets on the phone all day talking business with his former colleagues. I decided to hire a private investigator and I found out that not only was my husband going to an office two towns over to work, but he'd just as often leave that office and go to a coffee shop or just walk around on his phone. I decided to look into his devices and found out that they had numerous messaging apps used for cheating and he was still texting the woman and saying things like, I'm going to come see you, XOXO. He has not stopped doing business trips and I guess this explains why. However, I do not have access to most of our financial documents. We have a joint bank account that he puts money into to cover our expenses and maybe a bit more for luxuries for the kids, but the rest of what he earns and dividends he earns is invested, according to him, or in a savings account that we shouldn't touch. When I married him, he was earning nothing, with expectations of going further into debt, and I nevertheless signed a prenup where I agreed that regardless of the length of our marriage, I would only accept alimony for two years. We have been living as a whole, like he still has that high-paying job, and he recently bought a very luxurious car for himself. However, now that I've found this out, I've noticed that he's been saying that because our oldest daughter has a job, that she should just get her own health insurance before she's 26. He also told our youngest daughter that she should take out student loans, because it is good to have a skin in the game, and it's been causing my daughter to ask what was going on with her father and his ever-changing philosophies. What do I do? I am scared to confront him fully because I am honestly rather scared of the fact that I no longer know the man I'm married to. But I made the mistake of saying last night that I felt like he still had feelings for the other woman, and he got very angry and defensive, and said that he thought I was over this. Now for the top advice. He has been planning this divorce for two years. Once your youngest is in college he will serve you. He is fired on paper so he doesn't have to pay you much alimony. Yep. He split from the firm because her lawyer could ask to audit their business. It's all for show. That's a hard no. A lawyer in a divorce does not get to go audit an entire business. He split from the firm so he won't get hamstring paying alimony and any potential child support while the kiddos are in college. If you are a partner, you can. Do you have a job? It sounds like he's spending down your joint assets so there will be less to split when he serves you with divorce papers. Talk to a lawyer. Talk to several. You'll probably find he's been to a lot of them. I'm so sorry. He's probably just waiting until your youngest is 18 to file so there's no child support. That was my first thought. 
He got fired on paper so that his income would only be 20 to 30 grand, and he's spending all of the savings so that there isn't anything for you to get, but he's still working for them in consulting. They're either not paying him, or paying him in some under the table way, like stocks, or a friend is putting it into savings for him, both of which will be hard to find, but not impossible. There's a 100% chance that they're just going to bring him back in once everything is done, which would just change the child support and potential alimony payout, so not sure why he's going to all of that trouble. She's going to want a divorce attorney, as well as an accountant, obviously unrelated to that firm, to dig into tax records of the last two years and see just what kind of shenanigans he's been up to. Depending on what the divorce and accountant dig up, reporting his firm for unethical practices may also be necessary. Sounds like he's smart, but smart people make mistakes too. He's been planning this divorce since his affair, and I would recommend that you get on the same page.